My name is Mark Cabange. I live in Edmonton, Canada, and I'm the founding vice president of the Tamarack Institute, uh, where I worked from 2001 to 2011 running the Vibrant Communities Initiative, and I'm now an associate with Tamarack running my own group called Here to Their Consulting Group. I'm going to actually talk about the five conditions of collective impact and just give it a new twist. The first one is this idea of common agenda. And the idea here is very simple. Uh, could we all be working in, on the same thing and getting alignment on moving the same needles? So common agenda is how it was framed in 2011. We actually think that the challenge is how do you create shared aspiration in community. Condition number two is this idea of mutually reinforcing activities. And that's been an important part of almost all collective impact efforts. We need a comprehensive lens on the challenges that we're facing, the systems underlying vulnerability, environmental degradation, massive uh, unemployment in certain regions. And for that, we need a comprehensive uh, approach to thinking and action. So mutually reinforcing activities was the 2011 article. I think what we're learning is that we also need comprehensive thinking and action. The third condition of collective impact, as stated in the 2011 article, was this idea of shared measurement. And that was a fairly simple idea as well, that the things that we're trying to change, these outcomes, uh, we should all agree to measure the same things. We treasure, we measure what we treasure, and then we begin to treasure what we measure. Could we focus on moving the same intermediate needles so the big ones would move? That has been incredibly useful, it's been incredibly challenging, but we know once again that our understanding of that has evolved because shared measurement is clearly only one part of what we would call strategic learning and evaluation. So shared measurement is a subcomponent of that and that means we need an evolution from shared measurement to strategic learning and change. The fourth condition of collective impact and one that registers with many, many people is this idea of continuous communication talking to each other, adjusting our practice as we learn new things. Critically important, we're learning by itself is incomplete. We need authentic community engagement. Uh, and that includes continuing communication, but it's more than that. How do you get 360 degree intelligence from all the diverse organizations and people in a, in a community? How do you ensure that people with lived experience on the issues we're trying to address actually bring their knowledge to bear and feel that they're contributing, not only feel, but actually contributing to the thinking about the nature of the problem, what may or may not work, and feedback loops on how things are going. The last uh, feature collective impact that has been incredibly helpful is this idea that these collective impact efforts don't get done on their own, almost like a general contractor at a construction site where the plumbers and electricians and the carpenters come and go. Someone tries to make sure that the uh, the whole design makes sense. And that's really the work of the backbone organization, which is often under misunderstood and underinvested in. But we've learned watching communities work over this in the last five years that it's much more complex than just backbone. It really is how do you convene a genuine change process, create safe containers for people to have important and fierce conversations, uh, keep telling the narrative and the strategy as it evolves, keeping people in the loop, helping people exit the process and on-ramp into the process. And so what we would like to do in this field is complement Backbone by saying let's make the fifth shift from Backbone organization to convening complex change initiatives. Collective impact has been playing out for quite some time uh, all across the world and it's now that we have the language of collective impact that we see things that we think those are legitimate collective impact efforts. Uh, we see it working incredibly well in the area of poverty reduction. In fact, one of the prototypical collective impact efforts in Canada was a project called Opportunities 2000 in the Waterloo region outside of Toronto, Ontario, where the stated purpose of the initiative was to reduce poverty levels to the lowest in Canada. That was the prototypical initiative. There are now at least uh, 75 collective impact efforts in Canada based on that model, and it's called the Vibrant Communities Initiative. I'm going to give you one more example of where it's worked really well. Uh, there are over 50 cities in Canada that now have 10-year plans to end homelessness, many of which are organized around a collective impact effort. And while the success of these communities come and go, uh, already the city of Medicine Hat that has used a collective impact framework two months ago declared that they have finally officially ended homelessness. And if you're homeless in Medicine Hat, within two weeks, you're living in a home.